Peace, y'all. Snade Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador. Going for a four mile walk in the pit dark, you know what I'm saying? With another New York State prison story for y'all ass. This is about how I violated parole and had to spend 40 days in Edgecombe Correctional Facility. Okay, and this story is going to entail what led to me violating parole, how I violated parole, and what happened in Edgecombe, all right? So, without further ado, let's get into it now. This was YouTube. Yeah. This was the very, I'm gonna say, maybe eight months. Eight months into my one year of parole, right? So, so eight months into my, my parole, I was already violating parole on all levels, all right? I narrowly escaped the violation by doing what I said in the previous video of beating a drug test, right? By drinking vinegar. And if you watch that story, I spoke about how I drunk a little plastic cup of vinegar and I passed the drug test, but I had severe, severe, violent, the most violent of diarrheas, right? So I was already violating parole without getting caught. Now, on top of me doing that, I was popping pills every single weekend, right? So I was doing ecstasy every Friday and Saturday. And it just so happened on one of them Saturdays that me and my boys just so happened to walk around, right, and look for the ops. Why it? Yeah, it's water. It's water in the jar of my bag, son. Don't drink it all. I ain't drink none of that shit yet. Now, we just so happen to go looking for the ops, right? That's what niggas used to do, you know? Get drunk, get high, right? Grab a couple guns, right? And niggas would be like, yo, let's go look for the ops. So while we walking around, we end up in a certain area of the Bronx um, uh, that I'm not going to say. Out of respect for both parties, you know. So we on this block and we looking for our enemies. So while we looking for our enemies, let's say it's about 10, 15 of us. We see 10, 15 of them, right? So we immediately with the, yeah, yeah, right? So we start chasing them. So now while we chasing them, we ignoring the fact that it's Friday night, Saturday night. This is the Bronx. The police is definitely out patrolling, trying to catch niggas doing exactly what we're doing. So while we on that, yeah, yeah, right? We chasing the ops. We chasing these niggas, right? They see his police. So as they running past police, right? Police trying to make them stop. Couple of them is like, they chasing us, they chasing us. They got guns. Making it hot, right? That's the funny thing about being in the streets and niggas trying to be gangsters. If a dude could figure out a way to tell without getting exposed for telling, he will. He will, man. Especially if a nigga feel like his life is on the line. So he does that. And the cops is just like, freeze, freeze. Now, I said a similar story like this. But I think I was talking about a totally different subject, but it has something to do with this, right? So, they say freeze, get on the floor. So it's mad of us, faces on the floor. You feel me? They arrest us. So now, they arrest us, they figure out I'm on parole. We all get out the next morning, but they figure out I'm on parole. I already got that call at the house. They're like, yo, come in on Monday. I go in on Monday, I forget to drink any vinegar at all. They test me, urine dirty. On top of that, I got arrested, so that's police contact. So they throw me in the handcuffs, they lock me up. So now look, they take. I'm thinking I'm going all the way back up state. I think I'm thinking I'm going to Green or downstate or Ulster. There's another facility under New York 
State Department of Corrections called Edgecombe, where they primarily take dudes that violate parole, right? This place is like on the cusp of like the Bronx and Spanish Harlem, right? Like it's like on the cusp, like in between. I remember going in there and being able to see, him. I feel like I made this story before. I hope I didn't, man. But I remember seeing Vietnam, which is a building in my neighborhood, all the way from this place. But this is literally the Department of Corrections, like state green zone, the nasty black boots that mess up your socks, all that. Now, a little bit of details about Edgecombe. Edgecombe was all right. Edgecombe was all right, it wasn't that bad. They fed you the exact same foods that you would eat in upstate New York. <laughs> you know, the beef stroganoff, the sometimes tasting good breakfast pizza, you know, the grape ices for dessert, all that. Now, going into detail about what it was when I first went in there, when I first went in there, I ran into my boy, Kurt Flirt, again from Vietnam. He was on his way out. Now, it was a YG dude, I'm not going to say his name. Who, who he had problems with, and he was just about to spank, and then he ended up going home, right? So, while we in there, we chilling, we chilling, the dude is like trying to get cool with me, and at this point, it's like, I never had a problem with YGs, but this was the point where Cortland and the Gunners was like, like, starting to really like beef. And like shoot at each other now. So it's like I never personally had no problem with any YGs, but I had to like play a distance. But at the same time, me and Duke getting cool, but I'm keeping them at a distance. I'm like, we can't be that cool, bro, but but you alright. You know? Being that we both from the Bronx, we can have some type of camaraderie in here, but out in the town, I don't know if I could trust you or not, you know what I'm saying? And this basically was mutual with him. But this dude was one of them dudes that was like a loud mouth. And I remember an OG, an OG from Corland, his name is Monster Herb, if you know, you know. He had a problem with the YG nigga, you know what I'm saying? He told him one day, he like, yo, yo, you mad loud, like, yo, shut up. He like, yo, you always got something to say, man. Y'all young niggas are soft. Y'all don't even know how to fight. I beat you up. Go in the bathroom. He ain't really want no smoke with Monster Herb. But Monster Herb wasn't like no little dude. Like, he was like a dude that like had some weight on him. A dude that do bids. You know what I'm saying? Like, but he was disrespecting him. He like, yo, I'm tired of y'all young niggas thinking y'all somebody, man. Y'all ain't putting no work in the streets and all of that. And you know me being a good dude I'm talking to Monster Herb I'm like don't even do it bro I'm like don't even do it OG Let, it, let him rock Only thing is you're going to catch a new charge And have to go all the way upstate man Just let it rock For the life of me I don't know why I saved so many niggas either Because <laughs> I can't remember a time where a dude Put his neck out on the line for me I put my neck out on the line several times for dudes in jail, man. Several times. Several times. Ended up getting jumped because of dudes and all that. But describing more things about Edgecombe, what I didn't like is the best meal because we ain't have a real, like, commissary. They was majority just giving us, like, like, like chips. Chips, Pop-Tarts, and, and, like, Sausages, paws, like I remember we used to make this little burrito thing where you smash the chips in it and and you roll it all together with a couple pieces of sausage. It was type good. But you know it was jail food. Look who wanna walk with daddy. What's up, yo? Daddy. What you want, man? I just wanna walk with you. Yeah? Cause you love me? I love you too, man. Where's Where is he? I don't know. Go find him. He was on his bike. Oh, I think he's right there. I see him. All right. But anyways, I did my 40. We had to do a couple programs and shit like that. And then they let me go home. 
And then I stayed out of trouble and I ended up off parole and being a recidivism rate. Never went back to prison. Long story short, even if you have minor slip ups, you can still get it back together. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Peace.